Hi, oh, it's Colson Angler. I've got in front of me a new reel from Casking. Now, I didn't go for the uh, Kestrel Elite. I thought it was too dear for what it was. Um, but it had some good technology in there, and I am a lover of Casking reels. So um, when they brought out the Valiant Eagle 2 BFS reel, I thought myself, you know, it's worth investing. So I had a little look and got it delivered to the UK for £80. So uh, here's the box, it's opening up and have a little look. We're going to do some car comparisons to other reels. So this will just be an unboxing, but there will be a fishing one as well. There we go, there it is. So it comes in the usual casking box with a foam there. You'll have your schematics and some stickers and stuff like that in there as well. Let's put that aside because it's about the reel, isn't it? Here we go. Initial impressions. Very smooth. It is smooth, feels tight. Yeah, there's a little bit of wobble there, but uh, there is with other reels as well. So this is their budget option. Uh, Colour-wise, I like that colour, actually. It reminds me a bit of a Shimano Scorpion, something like that. Little red accents here on the uh, intention knob and then the handle there. Yeah, looking good, feeling good. Now, the thing with this one is everybody's saying it's over brakes. So let's have a quick look at the brakes. Let's put the brakes on minimum. There we go. Let's check the side to side play. There are not much there at all. Oh, the intention knob clicks. Just a little bit more. Yeah, a bit too much. Go back a click. Yeah, happy with that. All right, first spin. Doesn't spin an awful amount, does it, on minimum brakes? So maybe it is going to be over brake. Now let's go to max. Yeah, not a lot of all. So let's compare that. Let's put it back to zero. Let's compare that to a couple of other reels that I have. So here we have the Suranoia Dark Wolf Ultra. That's the original model that I've put the extra magnets into. And here we have the Shimano Aldebaran 22. So, you know, this is his main competitor here. That's out of his league, to be honest. But let's have a look then. Let's start with the Dark Wolf. Uh, it's on zero. There you go. I'll show you. There's no bullshit here. That's stock bearings in that. That's not with the rural bearings. That's plain stock bearings. Not bad at all, is it? So here we go. The Valiant Ego. Haven't degreased the bearings or anything on this. Maybe if I degrease them, maybe it'll spin for longer. It's not spinning an awful long time, is it? And I didn't do that very much at all, did I? And look at that. That's going to spin, spin and spin. So you're nowhere near this. But then you wouldn't be expected to be at that price point, would you? Um, so whilst we got them out there, let's have a look at size-wise. It's tiny. Even the Dark Wolf amazed me. And, me, and I thought, God, that's small. Because I'd had the normal Dark Wolf before. This is the Dark Wolf Ultra. So size-wise, it's smaller. You can you can clearly see that there with the frame. Handle looks about the same size. Maybe a tad smaller, actually. Uh, it looks more the size of the Outer Baron 22, which I guess it, the Valiant Eagle is the same size as the Kestrel. That is what they were trying to compete with. They've just got a carbon frame on this instead of a magnesium frame. Uh, there's a lot of technology from the Kestrel in there, though. So we'll get into that in a minute. But, yeah, so far, initial impressions. I like the look of it. feels very tight. All good like that. But the spool spin and the brakes, they do look a bit over-braked. Now, let's take these out of the way for the moment. Let's get back to this one. So let's get into it a bit. Let's take it apart and have a look at it. So uh, one little thing I don't like, this sticks out a bit, this spool release thing. I could imagine that uh, line will get stuck underneath that. Uh, we just push that forward to release it, and then we just lift off. Now, I quite like that. I don't like this turning myself, personally. I can never quite get it right, especially if the tolerances are really good. Um, like the Dark Wolf Ultra, it's, just, it's a bummer to get off it. It's so tight, the tolerances, twisting and all that is, is not something I enjoy. So straight off the bat, here's that finesse braking system, that arc braking system. Whoa, look at that. Boo-boo. So if we have a look at it, you've got a ring around here, which will, the spool will sit inside that ring. Um, and on it, the important bit, you can see this like, rectangular almost square magnets and there appears to be five on either side and if i turn the dial there you'll see them come out so you can see it, it goes in and out quite a way doesn't it so as that goes in and out and as these fly out if i had some tweezers i could have popped it on there 
and that will make the 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 magnet array just go further away from this center and affect the spool more um so when you need more brakes it'll give you more brakes when you don't it'll back off uh sort of an intelligent system there and you've got the same on the opposite side there's your bearing your stock bearing inside it looks to me yeah there's a lot of grease in there bit of gunk so it probably does need a clean out i may well do that before i go because i have done that on the other reels so uh, why wouldn't i on this one if i'm going to compare them so if we look at the dial on the side plate there's your minimum and it goes from one to well above 10 but it's very very positive i really like it it's easy to grip um if i show you the dark wolves this clicks nicely it's positive but your thumb can easily rub over it, it can wear off. And this, this silent tune thing they got on the Shimano, I hate it. I mean, where is it? I mean, this is the, the downside of the real to me. I don't care what it looks like. It would be nice if it was silver, I suppose. But I can't read the numbers. I can't feel when I've done a click. Why would you do that, Shimano? But it goes a fantastic reel. But for me, that's the downside of the Shimano. So, yeah, other manufacturers, take a leaf from this. This is fantastic. How it will be if it takes a knock, I don't know. But there you go. Right, let's take this feather spool out. Now, the design's a little bit different. Uh, apparently, the spool weighs 5.6 grams and it's a 28 millimeter spool. So it's a small spool and it is a shallow spool um it says feather spool there on it not quite the same as on the kestrel because the kestrel has a different it has a v there for your line to sort of, sort of uh i'm gonna say submerged but that's not the word a uh, sunken that's the word i want v which your line can sit in instead of these sort of blunt ended triangles which is nothing wrong with that i can tie onto that um there's your little micro bearing it's a little bearing isn't it i don't know the size of the bearing and we got a spool pin i prefer these to the c clips that you get on the Surin Neuer. for me that's the downside of that reel incidentally you can get spare spools for these off of uh Surin Neuer if you ask them directly on aliexpress or you don't know jamie at needham specialist tackle nottingham might be able to get hold of them for you it's ported it's not overly ported so it's probably quite a strong but small spool um maybe that might help when you're fishing for those bass in america or i'm fishing for hard fighting chub or perch or something like that in the uk there's your pinion in there nothing untoward there all sort of standard looking let's pop it back together so it just sits on here there we go and you click that back that's going nowhere just spin it make sure everything's okay so that was on maximum so minimum it seems to be freeing up a bit the more I'm I'm using it playing with it. So it probably Yeah, it's not bad now actually. That's not too bad. It's very smooth and quiet. Let's have a look at the other other features of the real um loving the real handles. Actually, I do like I think that's PTFE. I could be wrong. It's uh feels very, very similar material to the Shimano. So that's that's a plus. And if we look at the Shimano's, you know, how much do they spin? Spins quite easily. So does this. Actually, I'm very impressed with that. There's no sticking there. All good. <clears throat> like I say, you've got your red accents on your handle there as well. Proper retention knob there. Let's see about this uh, star drag then. There, let's have a look at it. This is contentious for some people. Some people don't like it. I, I, I think it's quite cool. Uh, I could take it or leave it. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, if we look at the Shimano, pretty standard. Nice silver. The DWU. Yeah, solid or nothing in it i mean to me it, it i think it looks quite nice that's, but that's personal taste let's try see if there's any sound to it hmm there is and there isn't at certain points you get a sort of clicking i don't know if you can hear this let's take it all the way back again so it's off at the moment there but it's on and off so i don't know what that's all about it was just a folk with the one I got, or maybe it's just not meant to. Yeah, I heard something then, if you... Yeah, and it's there again then, but it, no, it's, it's, it's not a clicker on it. I wouldn't say. I couldn't say that has a clicker. The intention knob? Yeah, very audible. Uh, let's take the drag off and see what the drag sounds like. 
yeah quite precise not particularly low let's compare it to the dwu let's get my fingers right i don't want to do any not so precise but louder a bit duller but louder the shimano well you can hear this the adjustment on it is something else isn't it beautiful precise and loud now i like that maybe some people that are noise but for me i prefer that um right so where did we get to the drag yeah it's there it works how much does it lock up does it lock up tight yep all right let's have a look at the uh spool button dunbar any hint of wiggle there there's a little bit of play i always like to compare these to other things there's a bit of play there a lot more play on the dwu um look at this star drag this appears more solid than the dwu which is, is decent reel, you know? I mean, you've seen my reviews, I've done of it. A lot of people, it, it's proven it's a beautiful reel. Uh, let's have a look at the conical. Hopefully you can see down in there. There you go. Conical line guide. Yeah, like in that, nice and big. Not as big as the Shimano. But, yeah, much bigger than the DWUs. So, there's a plus point for you. Uh, how's your palm? How's it sit? Well, if I'm fishing it, I'm going to like that. It sits on here. Nothing gets in the way of anything. No. Yeah, happy with that. Sometimes this can catch on your fingers. Uh, let's have a look at some... Uh, so the gear ratio is 8 to 4 to 1. Which I've already said... I uh, can't remember how many inches. No, 29.8 inches per turn of the handle. Uh, some 0.8 PE, 0.14 millimeter. Don't quite equate those two if you ask me. Uh, 150 meters, one PE, 0.16 millimeter, 115 meters. Um, it's all immaterial to me because I put 50 meters of line on all my BFS reels. If you want to fill it up more than that, you can. You'll lose a bit of control with your lightest of lures. Uh, you'll get more bird's nests. It, it all feels very positive other than that star drag, which, you know, people don't like the look of, but you can hear it there, but it comes and goes. I think mine's a little bit faulty like that. Uh, it's not going to trouble me. Yeah, is there anything else I could say? You know, I quite like... Let's have a look at the styling of it. Um, yeah, I quite like the styling. The point doesn't seem to get in the way. You know, it's a bit more pointed. Um, this is more rounded. This feels heavier. I don't know where it is. Uh, let's have a little comparison of the last BFS reel, the very first one they made, or one of the first. The uh, Zephyr, and this is a great reel, it's been proven, the only thing downside I have, well, I love this dial, I love the colour, the look of it, it's quite heavy. Um, I didn't find it had a huge range I could use on the dial, and this is what I'm suspecting this might be like. So, when I have a, a reel, I like to, you know, if this is giving me all of this range here, I like to... When it's all set up and say I'm chucking a three and a half gram lure or something like that, a little jerk bait, I like it to be about halfway. And then I can use my brakes. I can take it off a bit. So somewhere down around here, I can take it off a little bit. If I want to go a little bit further, I can put a bit more on if the wind's there. But if I find using light lures or whatever weight lures, I'm down near the minimum or up near the maximum. I've not got much range of of uh, brakes to use to adjust to f to the day to the conditions on the day that's what i'm trying to say all the different weights of lures that it might be able to throw so we will get out there we will try i've never thrown one before a trout magnet i will try and throw a trout magnet i promise to try whether it will happen will be another thing and i'll i will throw up to around um i think things like five gram ned heads with lures on uh small jerk baits sort of five grams three and a half grams that kind of thing uh, maybe some different profiles of lures as well, some some Senkos and things like that. Things I would generally use in the UK for sort of chub and perch and that kind of thing. Um, and we'll see how it copes. And I'll be interested to see how it copes at the higher end, not just the lower end, because 
that might be where it's sitting we we don't know at the moment we're presuming maybe they will adapt the brakes a bit and bring something out for the trout market or maybe they'll adapt the brakes of the kestrel in a uh, mark ii version and it'll be able to do both i don't know i have seen it fish the kestrel in a stream casting small jerk baits that kind of thing um and i will try and do the same with this one so i will try and fish it across the spectrum and let you know where it fishes because sometimes reels are deceiving sometimes you know i'm spinning that spool it's not doing anything i stick a lure on there it does something completely different sometimes you want more breaks sometimes you want less breaks um yeah so maybe it's a power bfs reel but secretly i'm kind of in a way hoping it is because i need a power bfs reel i don't want to be using my lighter ones for power bfs so when i'm talking power bfs i'm probably talking up to about for me personally 12 grams is uh, anything above that isn't bfs uh a lot of the elitists don't like the term power bfs but it's it exists it's something we want to do so why not uh so let's have a look at the specs so we've already said it's got seven bow bearings plus one roller bearing uh, it's got the aluminium 28 millimeter feather spool. It's got a finesse braking system, a gear ratio of eight to four to one. So that's quite fast, which equates to 29.8 inches per turn of the handle. Uh, it's 135 grams. It has five kilograms of stack, which is an extra kilo more than most real state, BFS real state, but a kilo less than the Kestrel. Uh, it's got a drag clicker. We'll check all this aluminium alloy main gear and shaft and that's linked to a hundred percent brass pinion gear and it also has a cnc aluminium handle so i don't think there's much else i can say here um we could look at the profile of it the you know how low it sits so if we line the real sits seats up with the shimano there it's a very low profile isn't it it's probably lower than the shimano you can see the size of it this is what it's extraordinary to me the outer bearings a small wheel this is even smaller. I mean, can this pack in that much drag? Can the Kestrel pack another kilo of drag in? Are these proven drags? Uh, the gear train, how's that sit? Probably sits a little bit lower. Uh, handle size compared there, pretty much identical. Um, so this might prove to be a good buy. Um, I'm hoping it will. Uh, the price point to me is what casking is all about. When they're trying to compete with Shimano, etc., um the problem they have is they bring out a reel it's 100 pounds or so cheaper than the shimano that's been bought out but then what shimano do is they drop the price or you can get it on sale somewhere like people talk about digitaka in the states don't they it's an online japanese company you can use them in the uk as well um and they bring the price down by half that so then you're paying 50 pounds more for a shimano rather than the kestrel now what they've done is i've got most of the technology other than a few penny saving measures like a few less bearings and not a carbon fiber uh, handle but mainly the magnesium frame uh, i've lost i think that makes it that much more functional as a casting fishing reel um the luxuries as i would say and i've got that technology in a little small small package value package i'm hoping so we'll leave it at that for the moment we'll get out on the bank and give them all a go compare them uh, and see how we do i hope that helps you maybe it's confused you some more oh, i'm sort of you know i haven't seen the light yet i want to see what it does out on the bank cheers the constant angler uh catch you later please like and subscribe hit the notification bell if you're that keen if you're super keen uh give us a thanks uh spread the word if you want to put a special comment on and want me to highlight it the thanks button's there for that as well don't want to push that too much because it sounds like begging times are hard but maybe this reel will save you some money cheers for now the constant angler